So, you know, if, if y'all haven't been following what's been going on within Israel and, and uh, you know, within the Gaza Strip, within the West Bank, and personally, I've learned a lot over the past few days as well. I've learned a lot. Um, so I'm kind of kind of break it down in case y'all haven't been following. So essentially, there's a neighborhood within the West Bank called Sheikh Jara. And essentially during, you know, the whole uh, during Ramadan and at the al Aqs Mosque, I believe it was, there was, you know, Palestinians worshiping, you know, um, there. And then uh, essentially Israeli police came in and, and broke up this prayer session um, and started firing, uh, you know, the non-lethal, they'll say, uh, type of, you know, a barrage of attack into the mosque, which, you know, dispersed the people there and essentially interrupted their, you know, prayer session or, you know, their religious holy session. Um, and a lot of this was sparked by the forced removal, the ethnic ethnic cleansing of the Sheikh Jara neighborhood, um, where, you know, people, Palestinian people who have been living there for generations as part of the expansion of these illegal settlements, these, you know, that have been condemned by international human rights groups. Um, they, that has been condemned, but Israel has said, you know, because they have the backing of the United States, the, the world global empire, they said they're going to just continue to do that. They're going to continue to violate inter international law and forcefully remove eth ethnically cleanse some of these neighborhoods um, as they try and essentially move towards completely retaking Jerusalem. So that's kind of what was the spark for, uh, you know, what's been going on, right? This, these, uh, this barrage of, of, of rocket fire that's going into the Gaza Strip um, and into the West Bank right now. So that's, that's essentially like a breakdown of, of, of what kind of started, uh, what started this, you know, conflict. And people say, don't say, con don't, you don't really want to call it a conflict because, well, okay, let's say this. The main issue with, you know, Israel and Palestine is, is there's an asymmetry of power. Israel has the backing of the United States, the world empire, right? The global empire. Um, we send billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, to Israel every single year. We send them weapons. We send them state of the art um, weaponry, all this type of stuff, right? From that, that is made here in America. We send that to them. Then they go and use those weapons, use those dollars, right? To oppress the Palestinians. Let me show y'all a little visual of let's uh, just a visual of the way that Palestine and Israel has changed over since 1947. So this was 1947. You can see in the white says Jewish settlements in the green Palestinian land, right? So that was Palestine 1947, and then the small Jewish settlements sprinkled here and there. Then with the UN plan. Right after World War II, um, and which I don't think the Palestinian people were, uh, the Palestinian people were not asked whether they want whether they want what they wanted to do, um, whether they wanted to give up their land for you know a state of Israel to you know a place for the Israelis, um, the you know the Jewish people from Europe to resettle into to their own state. Um, so you can see Palestine right here. Going from 1947, then after, right in 1947, 1948, the UN plan already losing a massive plot of their land, which, you know, d can't seem, it doesn't seem to be right. You know, I don't think that's right. If you were living in, in some of these areas and all of a sudden next year you just got kicked out, um, you know, I'm sure you and your family would be <laughs> pretty upset about that. Um, and then you see from 1949 to 1967, that space continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then you get to 2005, and this is 16 years ago, right? So not even where we are today. You see, I mean, it's just nothing compared to 1947, right? And that's all in, what's that, 58 years. All in 58 years that happened, and I'm sure it's even worse today as you know Israel continues to encroach on the Palestinian land in the uh, West Bank. So that's, this is, when if you look at this picture, do you... 
do you think that this is an equal side thing, right? Where a lot of people are trying to both sides this issue? No, of course, the Palestinian people are being ethnically cleansed out of this land that they have been in for generations. And it's getting to a point where they're almost completely gone from this picture. And so that's the issue. That's the, that's the issue that, that is faced right now is there's an asymmetry of power. The Palestinians, they don't have, you know, they don't have the backing of the world empire like the United States. They don't have billions of dollars coming in, um, you know, to them to protect themselves. They don't have any of that. Right. Um, so there's an asymmetry of power here. So when, you know, if you're going to ask me, do I condemn any type of civilian killings by anyone? Of course I do. Of course I do. But you can't sit here and tell me that someone who's been continuously against international law encroaching upon someone else's land and forcefully pushing people out of their homes that they have lived in for generations against international law, right? You can't tell me that that, that there's some parity, you know, within this issue. There's, there's no parity at all. There's no parity at all. The Palestinian people are being oppressed. The Palestinian people are being ethnically cleansed. The Israeli government, the right wing Israeli government, and I think that's something important to mention, right? When we talk about the Israeli government itself, right, the Israeli people are not a monolith. There are a lot of Israeli people who do not agree with the actions of the Israeli right wing government. It's funny. It's funny, too, because Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump have had a very good relationship. Very good relationship. Interesting that when Putin and Trump has have a good relationship, they're they're quick to you know criticize and you know call Putin a thug and et cetera et cetera. But when Bibi Netanyahu and Donald Trump have a good relationship, Bibi Netanyahu is not ridiculed the same as as Putin was, right? So you can you can all you can you can always tell, right? You can always tell when there's some type there's something going on there. Right. If they're not willing to criticize certain people the same way as others, they're not willing to do that. They're not willing to do that. And why is that? Why is that? Well, there's this thing called APAC. <laughs> there's this group called APAC who essentially, you know, is, is a lobby for the Israeli government. And they go they come into our government and they give a bunch of money to both sides. So both sides, whether you're talking about the Democrats or Republicans, will do whatever it takes to protect Israel, whatever it takes. And let's actually look into a little bit what the Biden government, the Biden administration has been saying about this very crisis, has been saying about the very crisis that's going on right now. Let's first start off with our favorite Nancy Pelosi. Here's what Nancy Pelosi said earlier today. Mind you, at this point when Pelosi said this, this was Yesterday, I think there was about 30 Palestinian ch uh, people that had been killed, 10 of 10 to 15 of them, children, innocent children had been killed. And this is what Pelosi had to say. Pelosi statement on the Hamas rocket attacks. Israel has the right to defend herself against this assault, which is designed to sow terror and undermine prospects for peace. And so this is this is the full quote here. But that, that's pretty much all you need to know. Right. So that's what Nancy Pelosi is saying. That, that's what Nancy Pelosi is saying. See, we all take in the same information, right? We see that there's an oppressed people. We see that there's a people that are under military occupation, uh, getting ethnically cleansed against international law, uh, rock, uh, rockets being fired into a, an extremely densely populated, open, essential, essentially an open air prison in Gaza. And we see children dying. And we have a heavy heart about that. And we condemn that. And we want to make sure our government is not funding that. Here's the leader of the Democratic Party, right? The party that's supposed to be, um, you know, the party of, of working class people, the party that, uh, you know, cares about humanitarian issues, like all these things, all these things um, that the Democrats claim to be. And the leader in the House is saying this after all of us taking the same information. This is what she has to come out and say. She has to come out and say it's. It's the Palesti it's the Palestinian people. It's Hamas whose rocket attacks are designed to sow terror and undermine prospects for peace. So that's what Nancy Pelosi is saying, right? We can't expect, we cannot expect 
the Democratic Party to do a damn thing about this.